Welcome to 558 Parkside Tech, where we talk about tech's past, present, and of course, the future of tech. I am your tech plug as always, Mike, and today we're talking about AI orchestration. So all you 558 -er future tech creators, let's get into it right after this. 558 Today we're talking about AI orchestration. The two tools that I'm going to try to cover here, which will really be three because I'm going to cover about a database, is we're going to use Flowwise and LinkChain to create orchestration. This definition I've written here is that orchestration tool helps technical teams transform simple AI implementation into reliable, maintainable, and observable production workflows. Sounds like a mouthful, doesn't it? But let me show you how it's done. First, let's talk about what Flowwise and LinkChain are and what do they do. They transfer AI calls into predictable workflows, enhances reliability, it streamlines development because it builds prompts templates and variables and calls your double LMs for you. And it also it parses your JSON data. Now, does that mean anything to you if you don't know what AI is? No. So let me explain it a little bit better. Most companies, when you're trying to build something from scratch, you may have a UI or a UX. And it might take you a little while to build that, right? Then you might build an API and there's another person who's building that. That takes more time. And then you have somebody on the back end doing the database. So all of these things take time, but whenever you're using orchestration, you're using Flowwise or LinkChain, you can build these things not in months, you can build them in days. And in some cases, if you're familiar with these tools, you can build it in hours. So let's go into the difference between automation and orchestration. Automation usually will execute a single predefined task. A repetitive, repetitive action, usually linear execution path. What do I mean by that? That means that A calls B, B calls C, C calls D, and that's all it does. We've automated that instead of somebody kicking off A and then somebody kicking off B and then someone manually kicking off C, you can automate that process. Orchestration is different. So when you hear AI orchestration, it's different. Why? Because it can coordinate multiple complex paths or systems. It can manage external integrations such as Superbase and its example or APIs. It can implement guardrails and safety checks. And if you use LaneGraph, which I'm not going to discuss too deeply in this particular video, you can manage state, you can do checkpoints, and you can handle complex flows and loops. Now here I have a use case. Now this use case could be used for anything, but in this example, I'm using the use case of I'm trying to get data from a ZOS machine. I'm trying to get SMF data, okay? And I'm gonna use LinkChain and Flowwise to do that with a backend database of Superbase. Now, what makes Superbase different if you're coming from a traditional cloud infrastructure or you're coming from an on-prem? It's not, it's not just a relational database, it's a vector database that also has relational database on it as well. So in this example, I'm going to use IZWS as a scheduler and it's going to fire off some JCL in this case and it's going to grab the SMF data and we're going to load that SMF data into a database. And then we're going to trigger Flowwise to create some prompts to throw it into our double M or our LLM. And with that LLM, we can tell it what we want it to do with this data. Either we want to notify somebody about particular um, types that we've been receiving, or we want it just to, to alert the team on a particular problem that might persist when, when using the SMF data. So in this case, we can build all of this fast, much faster than we can do a traditional setup that we do today when we have to build each piece separately, as I mentioned earlier. So this is a use case. But I also want you to understand when I say Flowwise and when I say LinkChain, LinkChain is a prover programmable, <laughs> that's a mouthful, <laughs> version of what Flowwise can do visually. So you choose which one you want to use. But in this case, it allows development to be done twice as fast. Now the example I gave you before covers these things. 
We did data acquisition. It does analysis. It's content generation and conditional routing. Depending on what it grabbed from the SMF data, it can automatically then with the LLM tell it to go do something. Okay, in this case, the, the workflow demonstrates how AI orchestration tools handle complex multi-step processes with decision points, external service integration, and conditional execution. As I've been saying earlier, it's significantly reducing development time and improved reliability. Now that we built this application, right? The question that most management wants to know is how do I know what's going on? How do I observe what's happening? How do I deploy it? So if you wanted to deploy this particular application once you built it, you have a thing called LangServe which for deployment, which exposes a API flows or AI workflows as REST APIs, okay? Also, you have LangSmith, LangFuse for observability, which handles latency monitoring across each step. You want to put this in place, not when it's finished. At each piece that you create in your workflow, you want to have some observability so that you know what's going on. Now, here's the rub. And here's the thing that management loves the most and why everybody's moving to AI not just because of the quickness or the speed by which you can develop an application to do something for you, an orchestration, but also faster development, as we've outlined earlier, improved reliability and a system uptime and built-in error handling, as well as better visibility because you can instantly see what's going on. And I wrote something here. I wrote here that if you, when you evaluate which tool best fits your technical requirements, start with simple flows and gradually increase the complexity. That's important as we're all learning AI. And AI has its own bugs and own little quirks about it that you need to have a better understanding. And as I said earlier, you want to implement comprehensive monitoring from day one. Do not work till it's finished because then when you run into a problem, you don't know where, where the problem really is, really is happening so that you can actually resolve it. Now initially, as your organization gets to up to speed with AI, it's gonna take some time because there's all kind of networking and security issues you're, hurdles you're probably gonna have to jump over. And also if you spin up an AI team, nine times out of 10, this team doesn't really know the company's applications per se in great detail. To even know how they would transform the automation that currently exists or the non-automation applications that currently exist, to be able to transform those into AI reusable and fast and reliable systems. So it's gonna take time. And those that are on non-AI systems to not feel threatened by sharing the knowledge of what their current system does, that they're not losing anything when they transfer it over to the AI group. Because you keep hearing how AI is gonna get rid of jobs. And the answer really is, sure, it's gonna get rid of some jobs, but hopefully it'll transform into people having different jobs in AI. Because at the end of the day, we're still dealing with data, we're still dealing with applications, flows, security, all the things that have already been in existence. It's just we're doing orchestration, not just automation. So if you got anything from this video, and I hope you did, I hope the step-by-step -step approach I'm taking and explaining it will be a benefit to you. And if it is, hit the like button. And as always, subscribe. Big Brother's always watching. And that's all I got for today. This is your Tech Plug Mike. Have a fantastic day. Yeah, yeah, 558 Park Site Tech in effect. That take 558 Park Site Tech in effect. Fe -fe 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 Tap in the future, let me introduce ya. 558 Park Site Tech, about to school ya. 558 Park Site Tech, in effect. Fe -fe 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 558 Park Site Tech, in effect. Fe -fe 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 558 Park Site Tech, in effect. Fe -fe 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 Park, 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 son.